parents have the disorder, but the, chi- the child doesn't have any children of his own yet. So you don't know if he's a carrier or if he is homozygous dominant. Okay? Generation two, individual number four, and this person here. Okay? In generation two, individual number four, they are also heterozygous. Same with the brother. Heterozygous, again, going back to the father, who could only pass on a little t, little t. Now we come over here to this female. Okay? Uh, this female over here, generation number two, individual number six. That person would be heterozygous. Not unknown. Even though you don't know anything about her parents, you do know about her child, who is a little t, little t, which means she had to have a little t to pass on. So they are heterozygous. Okay, so again, um, I'm going to have you guys answer two through five on your own. You need to bring that with you. It's uh, very quick, those relationship type questions. Um, and let's look at the Punnett square one together. If individual two, three, so generation number two, individual number three. So that's this person right here. If they marry a heterozygous woman, so we are at little t, little t, crossed with heterozygous, one big, one little, what are the chances of them having homozygous recessive offspring? Solve my Punnett square, and again, I have one half, uh, 50%, <clears throat> either one of those would work. Okay, so now let's look at an example of our very last pedigree. Okay, this one has a significant amount of males compared to females. Okay, I've got one, two, three, four, five males that have the disorder and only one female. And for my one female that has the disorder, her father is affected. Okay, that makes this a sex-linked recessive disorder. So now though, just like in our Punnett squares, as soon as you hear sex linked, you need to think X's and Y's. I have to use my X's and Y's when I have sex linked traits. So the first thing you should do on any of your sex linked um, recessive things, okay, and especially on your sex linked recessive pedigrees, just go through and do your male and female. Okay, so all of my females would be XX, all of my males would be XY. Okay, so now that I've gone through and done all my X's and Y's, I paused it so it wouldn't take so long. Um, let's do the males first, that's easiest. Okay, the males are either affected or they're not. Remember, males are either healthy normal males or they are affected males. So my males that are unshaded don't have the disorder, so they're healthy normal males. Remember, the Y cannot, doesn't carry anything with it. So I don't even have to worry about the Y for putting an allele on the Y. All of my shaded males, though, they have the disorder. So they have to be recessive. So they get the one recessive allele on the X chromosome. And then I'm done with the males. With the females now, <clears throat> same as before. You know, same as you always have had. I'm going to have an unknown option, a heterozygous carrier option or a recessive option. So in this case, it's a recessive disorder. So my female that actually shows or expresses the trait, she's got to be homozygous recessive. I know then that all my other females have to be at least one big H. They're, they can be carriers or they can be unknown. We'll go back and figure that out in just a second. But I know they have to have at least one big H. So again, using the, using the parents or the offspring, that will help you determine. So if I look at this first female up here, generation one, number one, she is <coughs> going to be heterozygous because of her children. She has two males that have the disorder. Okay? Those males, to get a Y, the only person that can give a Y is dad, which means for males, the X has to come from mom. The Y comes from dad, the X comes from mom. So if those male, males are affected, then mom has to have a little H to be able to pass on to them. So when we go into generation two, individual number two, she has the same thing. She has a son who is affected. So she had to pass on that little H, that X little H. Individual number two, generation, uh, generation number two, individual number six, this woman over here, 
she has to be a carrier. This little girl is X little H, X little H. So mom had to have one to pass on to her. And their son is affected as well. Generation three, individuals number two and number three. They do not have any children, so you can't use their offspring. And you can go backwards, though, and look at their parents. Okay? But since neither one of their parents are affected with the disorder, you have to put that they are unknown. You don't know if that X big H came from dad or that X big H came from mom. And so you have no idea what the second X is. Okay, so let's head over here to generation three, individual number six, this little girl over here. Okay, um, we know that she's X big H because she's unaffected. She has a son, though. So that son had to get its X little H from mom. So she has to be heterozygous. Go to her daughter, though. Her daughter doesn't have any children. Generation four, individual number one. The daughter doesn't have any children. However, if the father of this daughter is X little h, which means he had to pass on a little h to his daughter. So she would be heterozygous. Okay, same as before. I'm going to let you do three, four, and five on your own. Bring those completed with you. Um, and let's look at the Punnett square one together. The probability of individual 2, 1 and individual uh, 2, 2. So these are, this is this couple up here, okay? Heterozygous female and an unaffected male. So we are an unaffected male crossed with a heterozygous female. The probability of them having a boy who is affected or a girl and then a girl who is affected. So again, I'm just putting this in my Punnett square. I'm actually gonna make my Punnett square a little bit bigger. So that I can fit all my X's and Y's in it. So I keep my male gametes on one side, my female gametes on the other side. So I've got my probability of a girl being infected. Okay, my girls over here. Okay, that would be zero. I don't have any homozygous recessive girls. But out of the boys, there is a 50% shot of the boy being affected. Okay, <clears throat> so those are your three types of pedigrees. You're going to need to be able to figure out which kind is which using the rules on the front of your handout and then be able to figure out genotypes of them. And we'll practice that in class.